Hello there, welcome to Spuds of Politics. Thanks for joining us again. In the last few episodes we've been looking at the book of Mark. Today we're going to see Dr Luke. I'm reading today from Luke chapter 10, verse 21 to 24 in the English Standard Version. In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. The background to this passage was that Jesus had sent out 72 disciples, spreading the gospel, healing the sick, casting out demons, telling them that the kingdom of God was at hand. And he'd also welcomed them back from their mission. And they were came in full of excitement, rejoicing. Many people had been healed, that demons had been cast out, and that the gospel was preached that they were telling people about the kingdom and how many had come to them to ask questions and to and to repent of their sin and confess their sin and turn to God. They came to him in excitement saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus tells them, I saw Satan fall from heaven. And here he's talking about that he is the eternal God that came to earth. He's talking about his deity, that he is in fact God, he is the Messiah they've been looking for. He also tells them that because he saw Satan fall down from heaven, he saw him plunge as he sat with his father. You have power over all the works of the enemy. And that goes for you too, watching this video, that you have, in the name of Jesus, you have power over sickness, over demons, over everything that the enemy will come against you with. The enemy goes around like a roaring lion. He isn't a roaring lion. He's, he's feeble. He's got no real power that unless what God allows him, he can tempt us. And when we are drawn away by our own lusts and desires, we can fall into that trap. But he's given us his word and his word enables us. If we read it and feed upon it and let it, become part of our lives, we are able to extinguish all the fiery darts of the enemy. We are able to put him down, stamp on him, tread on the serpents and the things that try to sting us in life. So here Jesus is talking about abiding in him, trusting him and relying upon him. The Amplified Bible says that to believe in him is to trust him, rely upon him, depend upon him. So that's what we should be doing, letting his word be part of our lives, reading it constantly, thinking about it, meditating upon it. Meditation isn't going, mm, it's actually thinking about chewing upon the word, thinking about the passage that you're reading, like we're doing today. He is our saviour and the, uh, he has given us authority. The authority isn't ours, it's given and entrusted to us if we use it properly. And we are to use it properly. And we have to use it with humility, knowing that it's not ours. It's not our righteousness, but it is his righteousness. It's his authority. It's his power. And he goes on to say, do not rejoice in this, that the demons are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are in heaven, written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's true if you are a Christian, a born-again believer, and you are trusting and abiding in Him. Never be arrogant. 
are fully yourself. The salvation that we have is not from us. We can't boast about it. That Jesus is our rock. He is our foundation. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life because you repented of your sin and made Jesus Lord of your life. In verse 21 and 22, that we see Jesus rejoicing and praising the Father and thanking him that he's revealed these to the child. That child is one that trusts master his father. And we are to be like that. We're like to be like children in faith, believing, taking God at his word, like Abraham did in Genesis. He took his, he took God at his word and God counted it to him as righteousness. Because he walked in faith, Abraham just believed God took him at his word and he had no Bible, he had no scripture in front of him. He went by, he heard the audible voice of God speaking to him in his heart and mind and he followed. We see the Trinity in action, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was full, the first man full of the Holy Spirit, listening to the voice of his Father in all that he said and all that he did. So he was thanking that he, the, the Father chose to hide the things of those who thought they were full of wisdom and wise, like the religious leaders of the day. They were full of the law. They were full of rituals and traditions. All to, and they even put those above the word of God, which, as we saw in our previous episode. But he, he, he thanked God, the Father, and said, it's so good that you've revealed these to these children, my disciples. Because the revelation of God doesn't come by a knowledge, head knowledge. It comes by revelation. Like we saw with Peter when he asked the disciples, who do people say I am? And they said, John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets. And he turned around and said to them, and said, who do you say I am? And it was Peter that said, you are the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus told him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The revelation of Jesus Christ as Lord must come by our observing him, what he say, what he says, what he does. And that's how people came to a revelation from that day, before there was any scripture. There was the Old Testament scripture, but there's no New Testament scripture written down yet, because Mark and Luke and John and Matthew had not yet written anything down. God hides the truth from those that are wise in their own eyes and reveals it to those who are truly seeking. Because God doesn't want false converts. He wants ones that are true. True to, rec- to recognise who Jesus is. True to recognise his miracles, his work in this world and in, in this time. And that's true of this time as well. We have the scripture so we can weigh up what people are saying in the pulpits and what things are happening in the world with what scripture says. And this wisdom don't come by the accumulation of knowledge. It comes through an understanding, hearing. And God gave, gave us ears and he gives us eyes so that we can hear and see what God is saying and doing. True wisdom and knowledge comes from a fear of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of of wisdom and knowledge, it says in the Proverbs. And who Jesus is comes by a revelation from the Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The whole Bible is Trinitarian in nature. In the Islamic world, Muslims are trained to ask Christians, where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? And before you start to think of all the Places where Jesus said, I am, before Abraham was, I am. That I am the bread of life, I am the door, I am the resurrection and the life. Before you say any of those scriptures, they will say, no, I mean, where does Jesus say in those words, I am God, worship me. But you could equally ask, where did Jesus say, I am am not God, don't worship me. Because we see in all the Gospels, from being a baby, shepherds, wise men, came to worship him as a baby. 
and also through his ministry, the disciples worshipped him, angels worshipped him, the people worshipped him, those that were healed, those that had, had demons cast out, they worshipped him. When they saw him walking on the water, the disciples worshipped him. Demons bowed down, recognising who he is. So he didn't need to tell anyone not to worship him. They did, they worshipped him and he never rebuked one of them. He never rebuked, say, what are you doing? I'm just a man like you. No, he, oh, he often made claims only God could make. He only did the things of the Father. He said in John 5, as my father works, so am I working. And the Jews then picked up stones to stone him because he knew he was making himself equal with God. The whole purpose of Jesus' ministry was that the things that he said and that he did had the purpose of giving revelation to people of who he is, that he is God in the flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he constantly claimed the authority. He even had the authority to forgive sins, and the Pharisees questioned that, but then he went on to heal. So if he can forgive sin, if he can heal someone, he has the authority to forgive, because they all knew that only God could forgive sins. So, And if God could heal this man, he could certainly forgive his sins. And if we turn to Jesus in repentance, knowing and seeing his power, and having a revelation of his power, like this man who was paralysed and the, his friends brought him in through the roof of the house and, and lowered him down in front of Jesus. Jesus, when he saw their faith, he said, Son, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees went mad and said, Who are you forgiving sins? And Jesus said, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or take up your mat and go home. And he did both. The crowd were astounded. Read verse 22 again. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. and No one knows who the Son is except the Father or who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. This verse sums up the whole passage. It talks about the divine relationship between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The relationship of the Godhead which is eternal before he even made the universe and made us. And though the Holy Spirit is mentioned less, it, is, it also helps to orchestrate what all that goes on in the world. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus and Jesus glorifies the Father, the Father glorifies the Son. They will all work together and it's through the Holy Spirit that we come to a conviction of who Jesus is, that he is the Saviour of the world and we come compelled to confess our sins, repent and turn to Jesus as Lord and Saviour because he died on the cross. All this was the work of the Holy Spirit. All this was the work of the, the Trinity. Jesus came voluntarily. It wasn't anything out of control when he went to the cross, Calvary. Nothing had gone wrong. It was all part of the plan. The devil wanted Jesus dead, but he didn't realise it was part of the overall plan. And now the devil is prowling round trying to get Everyone distracted from the true gospel. He knows the gospel, but he tells lies, and that's why there's lots of false prophets and teachers about in this world. And there's lots of cults and false religions and ideologies going around. Even, even within Christendom, there's false beliefs there that are going on. And that's why we need to know our Bibles. That's why we need to know the word and so that we know what is false and what is true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He gave us the words of the Father and he passes on to us and the Holy Spirit brought to the remembrance of all the apostles so they could write the gospels and the epistles that we have today 
in our New Testament, which also confirms the Old Testament. They are interlocked, they're together, there's consistency throughout the Bible. We can rejoice that Jesus saw the devil fall from heaven. He was at one time the devil was Lucifer, the most one of the most beautiful angels in heaven, but he rebelled and took a third of the angels with him and he was cast down. And, and since then, from the Garden of Eden, he tried to make man autonomous to live without God. And that's how the world is. And that's why the wrath of God is on this world. And that's why we must be born again if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven by trusting in Jesus, the Saviour, who was in the plan of redemption. And that's why we have the Old Testament because that shows the line of the kings in the line as a, as a man. He was in that line of kings from, from the throne of King David. But he was from heaven. He was eternally existing, watching over and part of the orchestration with the Father and the Holy Spirit, making a way so that came to Mary, uh, being a willing vessel to take on the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God in the flesh as a man, Emmanuel, coming to be born and to live a life of righteousness by the Holy Spirit and it'll be complete obedience to the Father all the way up to the cross to save us from our sins. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you've got plenty out of these truths. Stay in the Word, keep praying, keep asking God for revelation and you will go, if you continue to feed more, you'll get more revelation and God will show you great and mighty things. And you can answer the questions that people have about Christian faith or about being a Christian about because it's not about we said last time it's not about religion it's about relationship we can only know the Father through Jesus Christ our Saviour and he brings us into the family of God into a relationship and that's why it's important that we must be part of a church don't try and be on your own like a sheep, it must stay with the flock. And if it, as it goes off on its own and wanders, it becomes a target for predators and for wolves. And there's men in wolves in sheep's clothing pretending to speak the gospel, but are teaching falsehood. And they can be captured by that. Or the predators who just wants to kill them. But if you stay with the flock, a body of believers who, who can encourage you and be encouraged by you as you stay and learn the word of God and trust in it. Stay in the Gospels, read those because they tell us all about Jesus, the things that he said and the things that he did and ultimately his death and the resurrection. He didn't stay dead. He knew he was going to rise from the dead again. He had no doubt about it and he told the disciples in advance that he would have he would do that. And he did. He is the resurrection and the life. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed it. And so take care. God bless. And bye. And I'll see you soon.